They are under every house, run along every block, and cover a city of nearly a million people. They're a world of hidden tunnels that few get to see right beneath your feet. And we get to take you down there. Our guide is someone who knows every inch of this labyrinth. My name is Megan Abadi. I'm an assistant engineer for the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission Wastewater Enterprise. I'm part of the division of Wastewater Enterprise, which is called the Collection System Division. It's basically a euphemism for sewers. I crawl through a lot of sewer pipes. That's basically my job. It's fun. Exploring the sewers is no picnic. So Megan's coming up above ground to help us suit up in protective gear. We put on a harness, a helmet, and waders for the knee-high water. And this is the gas meter that will go off if any bad gases are present. Okay. Wastewater just really, I found it really interesting and satisfying. Not only are you providing a really vital service to people, but you're kind of like part of the circle of life. So we're going to start walking, right? Yes. Okay, we're going to start walking. San Francisco's sewer network began to be built during the gold rush era. So we have pipes that are still in use that are 150 years old. San Francisco has what's called a combined system. That means that the storm water and the sewage water, like from your toilet and your sinks, it all goes into the same set of pipes. 200 feet below ground, we find a tunnel bored through existing granite rock, giving this part of the sewer its unique cave-like structure. Here, we start to hear another sound. Can you hear that? That's the ocean. Uh. Even with a guide, exploring the sewers can be risky. I totally get the uh, draw of going and exploring sewers on your own, but it's really, it's really a bad idea. When we were in here earlier at high tide, it was very loud and it was actually shaking the ground a little bit, but um, the reason we're here now on 4th of July is because it's the lowest tide of the year. So the upside of that is we get to walk all the way out to the discharge pipe, hopefully. The downside is you don't get the like bell rumbling ocean bore like we did earlier, so. But we get to live. <laughs> but we get to live. However, the water isn't the only thing that holds danger down here. There's gases in sewers that can kill you pretty quickly if you don't know about them. Hydrogen sulfide is the main one we're usually concerned about. There are concentrations of hydrogen sulfide that can just knock you out in minutes. The end of our journey is what they call a discharge pipe, which empties water into the ocean. It's only used during heavy storms, when the storage spaces in the sewers get full to the brim with water. Another big challenge we're facing is sea level rise. A lot of our discharge points, they're not getting any lower, but the water level's getting higher, so we sometimes face the issue of seawater backflowing into our system. The oldest portion of the pipe, it's... Oh. 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 Salt water going into the treatment plant is, is bad. There's biological systems that treat the wastewater and seawater or bay water coming in at high tide is uh, not great for the microbes that break down our sewage. As much as I like being in the This is a, the circle of life. We're, you know, disposing of people's waste. We're making it okay to send back into the environment. And I love it. 